welcome again to this particular session. So after having a little bit of what we call overview regarding branches, uh, when we left in the last session, we were discussing what we call data system and what we discussed over there, we are, we are going to write it now, data system. Data system. As we discussed in the last session, the data system basically is a part of dependent branches system. The first point you should write this. It is a part of dependent branches system. It is a part of dependent branches. is adopted by this system is adopted by organization having a small scale of operations adopted by organizations having a small scale of operations correct a small scale of operations Then, I wrote that under this system accounting is done in the books of the head office and head office maintains only a branch account and a sales ledger. Under this system, under this system, comma, accounting is done, accounting is done in the books of head office only in the books of head office only head office maintains A branch account and only a sales ledger, only a sales ledger. And I told you the meaning of sales ledger. Sales ledger means accounts of credit customers accounts of credit customers accounts of credit customers so when we say that head office maintains a branch account and a sales ledger that means head office is maintaining branch account and all credit customers account or all data's account correct in other words, in other words, head office maintains branch account and data's account. And I told you earlier, that is also the reason why this system is known as data system, correct? Data's account. Now, because as you have seen that head office is maintaining what we call only branch account and data's account, indirectly it also means it is not a full fledged double entry system. So it's not a complete system of accounting. It's not a complete system of accounting, not a proper complete accounting system.
complete accounting system. This is what we discussed. Correct? Now we come over to the accounting under data system. How we prepare the accounts. Accounting. Under data system. Accounting under data system. How accounts are maintained. At least now, at this particular point of time, you are aware of this particular fact that entire accounting is done in the books of the head office. You are also aware of this particular fact that head office shall maintain a branch account and a data account. Correct? When we say data, that means accounts of all credit customers. So, in the books of head office, these are the formats. In the books of head office, first of all, you should write the title in the books of head office. In the books of head office, we will maintain a branch account. Branch account. And generally the format will look like this. Format will look like this and I will explain it later on. First you write the format. Balances brought down. Balances brought down. Stock. A simple format I am providing. Daters. Goods sent to branch account. To goods sent to branch account to cash i have already told you head office will bear all the expenses of the branch indirectly it means that head office shall send what we call cash to the branch for expenses so write in bracket branch expenses And here on the opposite side, we shall write by remittances. Now, remittances, what exactly we mean by it, I will let you know in a short while. Remittances. Remittances shall have two important parts. Cash sales and cash from daters. Cash from daters. cash from daters. Earlier when I was explaining dependent branches, I did tell that all the what we call major policy decisions are held by the head office or vest in the hands of the head office and branch is simply expected to follow those instructions and put them into implementation, execute them to the best of their abilities, do as much as sales, collect as much as cash and send back to head office. So whatever cash is collected by the branch on account of cash sales and from daters, this is known as total cash collection and it will be remitted back to what we call head office. Then we will write here balances carried down. Balances carried down stock. Daters. And then the difference will deliver us the net profit. It could be net loss also, but I am writing net profit. This is the simplest possible format, correct, of branch account. I will explain each and everything. Don't worry about that. Show a little bit of patience. I told you that under data system, head office will maintain the what we call accounting with respect to what we call branch. Important point is that head office shall maintain one branch account and besides that, daters account. Daters when we write, it indirectly means accounts of all the credit customers. Data account. You have prepared daters so many times. Daters account. 
data is an asset. So the opening balance brought down will be written over here. Correct? And closing balance we will write here. Closing balance. As you know, anything which will increase the asset must be debited and anything which will decrease the asset must be credited. Is it clear to you or not? Now suppose in the current year, the branch has done some credit sales. So it will increase the debtors or decrease the debtors. Quite obviously when branch has done some credit sales, it will increase the amount of the debtors and that is the reason credit sales will be written towards the debit side of the debtors account. Credit sales. Now let us say I have I have means the branch has done credit sales of one lakh, and out of one lakh ten thousand have been received from the debtors. So when we, when we will receive cash from debtors, correct? It means the debtors will get reduced. So I will write by cash. When we say by cash, it means cash from debtors. cash from debtors sometime it sometime it may happen but not always but it could happen for example branch has sold goods to the credit customers and some of the goods have been returned by the credit customers known as sales return so sales return when goods are returned obviously the amount due from debtors will get reduced and that is why sales returns are put towards the credit side Sometime debtors become bad, so bad debts will also be put towards the credit side of the debtors account. And similarly, if we have given any discount to the debtors so that they make the payment before the maturity date, discount will be put towards the credit side. This is the format of debtors account. Now I will explain the things in detail to you. Correct? And I'll put up this sheet for a while over here. I will take a rough sheet now because I have to explain the intricacies of this. These are the rough sheets. When I take rough sheets, obviously it means I want to make you understand. We simply do not want to go by the formats, just cram the things. We need a little bit of logic. It's pretty cold out here in Delhi. Let me have a sip of tea also. Now, in order, in order to understand the data system, correct, let's have a look over here. Let us say this is the current accounting year. And current accounting year is starting from 1-4-2022 and let us say it is ending on 31st of 3-2023. In this accounting year, in this accounting year, this is my branch, correct? Some transactions between the head office and the branch took place, let us say. In the beginning, with the branch, there were balances, let us say, of debtors. For simplicity's sake, let us say 50,000. And of stock, 10,000. These are the opening balances available with the branch. Last year, let us say, in the last year, branch might have done some sales and some of the customer did not pay. So that is why the debtors, debtors means those customer who did not pay till the end of the last year. That is why they are being brought forward as opening balance. Similarly, stock signifies that last year head office might have sent the goods to the branch and all the goods might have not been sold out. So some of the stock left and that is being brought forward. So this is nothing but opening balances. Let us say in the current year, in the current year, head office supplied goods, goods supplied by head office. In the current year, let us say head of head office supplied goods worth rupees, let us say 5 lakhs. 5 lakh worth of goods have been supplied by head office to the branch as you know, under dependent branches, correct? It is the head office which is going to supply the goods. Similarly, let us say there were some expenses of branch. Expenses of branch. Let us say expenses were in the form of rent, salaries, 
rent, salaries, wages, taxes, etc. For these expenses, cash was sent by head office, let us say to the tune of rupees 50,000. That means cash sent by head office for branch expenses, that is 50,000. Now, let us say, in the current year, please pay attention, in the current year, total sales, total sales by branch, total sales by branch in the form of cash sales, in the form of cash sales amounted to 3 lakhs, correct? And in the form of credit sales, in the form of credit sales, amounted to rupees, let us say, 7 lakhs. Total sales done by branch to the tune of almost 10 lakhs, out of which cash sales amounted to 3 lakh and credit sales amounted to 7 lakh. <laughs> credit sales means, <clears throat> these are our data, data of branch, correct? So, branch sold out goods on credit worth rupees 7 lakh and by the end of this accounting year pay attention by the end of the accounting year we were able to receive cash from daters cash from daters out of this 7 lakh let us say we were able to receive 5 lakh are you getting my point or not we were able to receive 5 lakh from the daters is it clear to you or not that means total credit sales were 7 lakh, but out of that I have received 5 lakh worth of what we call cash from the daters. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. Please pay attention. I told you the meaning of remittances earlier. As you know that in the branch account towards the credit side, we write remittances. Remittances has got two important parts. One, cash sales. And second, not credit sale. Second is cash from daters. Cash from daters. Remittances signifies total cash collected by branch. And branch will collect the cash through cash sales in the form of 3 lakh. And from daters, 5 lakh. So total remittances will become 8 lakh. So this much of cash will be sent by branch to the head office. Is it clear to you or not? So, these are the information and by the end of the accounting year let us say balance carried down balance carried down a stock worth rupees let us say uh, 50,000 remain unsold this is balance carried down and there were some daters but how much we do not know let us say this is a simple what we call question a sort of what we call demo so opening balances with the branch amounted to this much we supplied, means head office supplied goods to the branch to the tune of rupees 5 lakh. Head office also sent cash to meet the branch expenses 50,000. Besides that, cash sales were 3 lakh, credit sales were 5 lakh, and cash received from daters were, let us say, 5 lakh. Is it clear to you? And closing balances, stock is 50,000, and daters we do not know. Now, let us say, I want to solve this question. These are rough sheets. You need not require to do anything. I am trying to make you understand. We know that in the books of the head office, we will prepare the accounts. Branch will not make any account. Head office will make the accounts. One branch account. I gave you a little bit of idea how branch account is maintained. Now I will give you it. I, I will give you details in a full fledged manner. This is branch account. Correct. Besides that, we will also prepare data's account. Data's account. As I told you, these are the transaction. Opening balances, we are going to write it towards the debit side of the branch account. Opening balances, balance brought down. Balance brought down. Data's. That is 50,000. And we have a stock. 
stock worth rupees 10,000. Important point is that which you will have to keep in your mind while preparing or while doing the accounting. Since daters are written in the branch account as opening balances, but at the same time you are preparing daters account also. So that is why opening balance of daters you must not write, you must not forget to write over here. So opening balance of daters will also find place in the daters account too. Correct? Then I gave you goods supplied by head office. If head office will supply goods to branch, what will be the entry? The entry will be branch account debit, branch account debit to goods sent to branch account. This will be the entry for what we call goods which are being supplied by head office to the branch because branch will receive and goods are moving out. Is it clear to you or not? So that is the reason why we are going to put goods sent to branch account on the debit side of the branch account. So on the debit side of the branch account, I will write simply here two goods sent to branch account. Two goods sent to branch account. Two goods sent to branch account. You can also write to GSTB account. Five lakh worth of goods have been supplied by head office to the branch. Is it clear to you or not? In simple words, there is a simple rule to prepare the branch account. You presume yourself as the accountant of head office, correct? If you are going to get imparted with something, you are going to put it towards the debit side. And if you are going to receive something, you are going to put it towards the credit side. It is as simple as that. Is it clear to you? When we are supplying the goods, obviously we are getting imported with the goods and that's the reason actually we are going to put them towards the debit side. So we have supplied goods. Now next point which I have given here that branch expenses, cash sent by head office to branch for expenses, 50,000. Now when head, when head office will send the cash to the branch, it means head office is getting imported with the cash of rupees 50,000. Just a moment ago, I told you that whenever we are going to get imported with something, I am going to put it towards the debit side. So that is the reason. In fact, my entry logically will be branch account debit to cash account. This is the entry. Branch account debit to cash account. That is why we are going to put cash towards the debit side. This is one side of the game. Or take the simple side. We are getting imported with the cash. So we are going to simply put it over here to cash. Branch expenses. 50,000. So 50,000 worth of cash I have sent. Now, I will write here remittances towards the credit side. Remittances means total amount of cash collected by the branch and sent to head office. Correct? And I told you remittances has got two important part. One is cash sales and another one is cash from daters. Cash from daters. We do not write here credit sales. Remember one thing. Correct? We write only cash sales and cash from daters. That is why I am cautioning you here time and again. I told you that my total sales were worth rupees 10 lakh. No doubt about that. Cash sales 3 lakhs. So cash sales I am going to write here 3 lakhs. There were credit sales also 7 lakh but credit sales I am not going to write here. Correct? Credit sales but we know that will find place over here. Credit sales comes in the daters account, we know because we just prepared the daters account. Correct? When, whenever credit sales will be incurred, the amount of daters will get increased and that's the reason actually daters will be debited. So credit sales are worth rupees 7 lakh. It will find place in the daters account, but it will not find place in the branch account. And I will give you the logics for the same also. Don't worry about that, why we do not write credit sales here, but later on. At this moment, we are simply moving by the what we call format. Cash from daters. Cash from daters, we had written 5 lakh. So we received from daters 5 lakh. So total remittances will be equal to how much? 8 lakhs. So that means branch has collected 8 lakh rupees on account of cash sales and cash from daters and it has sent 8 lakh back to head office. This is exactly the main task and responsibility of the branch. Is it clear to you? Then I will write here balance because we have written cash from daters. So we have to keep an eye also over this particular fact. 
because this is also affecting the data's account and I will write here cash from data's because when cash is received from data's, data's will get reduced and that's the reason 8 lakhs will also find place over here. 8 lakh will also find place over here. Is it, sorry, 5 lakh worth of cash we have received, not 8 lakh. So cash receipt from daters is 5 lakh. We will also write it in the daters account, correct? Now, we will write here balance carry term. Balance carry term. Now I gave you that at the end of the year, there is a balance in stock and daters. Balance of stock is given to you as 50,000. Balance of stock signifies that whatever goods which branch had in the beginning and whatever goods which were sent by head office during the year, out of that some goods have been sold and some goods have remained. So, this is closing stock. There is also closing balance of daters, but how much? That we can find out. For the same, we, we need to actually simply tally this account. 7,50,000 is the total. You can also understand it logically. 50,000 worth of amount was due in the beginning and we did credit sales to the tune of 7 lakh. That means total amount due from daters is 750. Out of that we have received 5 lakhs. So quite obviously still we are supposed to receive 2,50,000. So this is nothing but this is the closing balance of the daters. That is your balancing figure. So closing balance of data, you are going to put it towards this side, 2,50,000. Now all you need to do is to tell you this, correct? That will be equal to 3 plus 8, I think 11 lakh. And from 11 lakh, you will have to subtract your debit side items. Debit side total is 5, that is uh, 550, 6 lakh, 6 lakh, 10,000. Now if I subtract 610 from 11 lakh, it will be equal to 490. This is my net profit. Looks very simple, but not that much simple. This is my net profit without any doubt. But don't think this is as easy as it looks. Correct? Because I have to make you understand some important complexities of this particular system. It looks easy as I said. Allow me to have a sip of tea. See here, when we have prepared this branch account, looks very simple. It seems that all we need to do is to just put up the goods sent, um, put up the things over here which have been supplied by head office goods and cash and similarly total amount which we have received from daters. It looks as easy as that. But when we prepare branch account, you must have noticed actually two, three important aspects. Correct? What are two, three important aspects? As a rule, as a rule, opening balance of a particular, as a rule, opening balance of a particular asset or for that instance liability cannot be written in another account. Have you paid any attention towards this particular point ever? I have written in the branch account opening balance of daters in stock and now I am saying that as a rule, it is not allowed. Logically, it is against the accounting conventions or accounting what we call uh, rules. But in spite of that, we have written that. Correct? Logically, you cannot write, as I said, any account in a different account as well as. But despite that, we have written over here. Second important point which you must have noticed that we haven't, we have written credit sales here, but we haven't written credit sales in the branch account. So sometimes student fraternity get confused by these things, correct? Similarly, honestly speaking, if, if in this question there would have been sales return, discount or bad debts, I would not have written them in the branch account, but I would have written them in the data's account. So this sort of confusion gets arises actually when we prepare branch account. And especially if in the question there are transactions like sales return, discount, bad debts. So students get confused where to write. Should they write it in the branch account and also in data's account or only in data's account? So these are the things and the problems which the student fraternity faces when they solve the questions of data system. I will try to explain you. But you must also not forget 
the initial discussion which we have had over the data system. Could anyone among you repeat that particular discussion? What did I talk about regarding data system? It is a part of independent branches, number one, quite obviously. Second, is it a full-fledged accounting system? No, it is not a full-fledged accounting system. It happens to be an incomplete accounting system. This is a very, very important line. And I will tell you now actually why it is an important line. And second, under this system, head office will maintain only branch accounted data account. These are the vital characteristic of this particular system. So now I will give you answers to all the confusionary points. See here. First thing first. When we prepare account, branch account, you have to keep in your mind that in branch accounting, especially under data system, there are three parties which are involved. One is head office, another one is branch, and another one is customers or daters. How many parties are involved in branch accounting under data system? Sir, one is head office, good. Another one is branch office, and the third one is data system. Never ever forget this point, that whatever transactions which are taking place between head office and branch office, whatever transaction or what sort of transaction or whatever type of transaction taking place between head office and branch office only such transaction will find place in the branch account are you getting my point or not indirectly it means if there is any transaction which is taking place between branch office and daters it will not find place in the branch account any transaction which is taking place between the branch office and the data's account, it will not find place in the branch account. Remember one thing. So this will simplify the things for you whenever you are going to face any confusion later on. So it will not be over there because you now know the logic. What did I tell you? Just wait for a while. Sometimes this phone actually get problems. <coughs> Sorry. So... Whatever transaction or any transaction which takes place between branch office and the daters will never ever come in branch account. Please don't let it skip this particular golden point from your mind. Is it clear to you? Now you will get the answer. See here, when we did the credit sale, it is a transaction between actually branch and daters. It is not a transaction between head office and branch office. That is the reason credit sales is not finding place in the branch account. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, if there would have been sales return, it sales return means goods returned by daters to the branch. If there would have been bad debts, again it is a transaction between daters and what we call branch office. If there would have been discount, Again, it is considered as a transaction between daters and branch because ultimately it is the branch which has sold out goods to the daters. And I told you earlier that branch office is given a little bit of liberty with respect to what we call giving of discount, etc. So these are the transactions which are related purely to what we call daters and branch office. And that is the reason these transactions are never ever put in the branch account. Is it clear to you or not? these transactions will always find place in the data's account. So even if in this question there would have been any sales return or there would have been any bad debts or there would have been any discount, I would not have put them in the what we call branch account because these are the transactions which are basically concerned with the with branch and branch data. Is it clear to you? Credit sales is also not written over here reason being is that it is a transaction between branch and data so this point now should actually clarify your this glorifying confusion is it clear to you but some among you might actually be tempted to ask me a question sir if this is the situation we got this particular point but if this is the situation then why we are writing cash from daters here and also here now, this is a billion dollar question. I told you any transaction which is taking place between branch and head office. I told you any transaction which is taking place between branch office and daters, it will not find place in the branch account. 
for example credit sales sales return bad debts we understand that okay but what about cash from debtors what about cash from debtors sir why we are putting it in the branch account and simultaneously in the debtors account also you may be tempted to ask this particular question isn't it or not so i will give you the reason reason being is that debtors are giving cash to the branch no doubt about that and branch is remitting this cash to the head office that mean in this transaction all three parties are involved and that is the reason this transaction will also come under what we call debtors and besides that will also be written in the branch account is it clear to you or not so cash receipt from debtors now it should not confuse you that why we are writing cash receipt from debtors first in the branch account and later on in the debtors account also the reason should be absolutely crystal clear now because this is a transaction in which all the three parties are getting influenced or impacted or affected is it clear to you or not so that's the reason cash received from debtors first of all will be put towards the credit side of the branch account and obviously it will also find place in the data system is it in the data account so regarding these your confusion should not be over there is it clear to you sales return bad debts discount credit sales once again repeating credit sales sales return bad debts and discount these are purely transaction related between branch office and debtors never ever will come in the branch account will always find place in the debtors correct number 1 number 2 cash receipt from debtors is a transaction in which all the three parties are involved and that is the reason it will come in the debtors and also in the branch account correct these are the confusion these are the points which create in fact lots of confusion and i have tried to actually raise them up i hope i have succeeded and now coming over to a trillion dollar question which most of the student actually never understand i told you many all of late actually through my experience i am noticing students are simply interested in just solving question correct in a quick fire time that's all so i told you earlier when later on you will move into what we call uh, your practical arena especially when you are going to attend and face interviews uh of creditable forms over there you will find such questions correct secondly i told you earlier logically it is against the basic rules of the accounting that i cannot put balance of a particular account in some other account and here i am putting up i have put up debtors balance and stock balance as opening balance and closing balance in the branch account i can put debtors balance in the debtors account that's fine no harm in it but if i am putting debtors balance in the branch account that is something which is not as per the normal accounting practices now i will give you i will try to explain this point remember one thing ultimately we have to write the balances here only but i am trying to give you an idea regarding that let us say there is a person and he is very hungry and he is quite poor also correct and he is having only let us say 50 rupees he is very hungry he is virtually starving since last two days he hasn't had any sort of what we call lunch dinner or breakfast suddenly on the road side he find a food vendor correct a food vendor and because he is having only 50 rupees he found that within 50 rupees he can satisfy the fire which is actually engulfing what we call his stomach so he goes to that food vendor gives rupees 50 and eats up within those 50 rupees whatever he could and he is able to at least quench he is able to actually douse the fire of hunger which was engulfing his stomach as i said earlier the food vendor was as i told you he was on the road side and over there it was very unhygienic correct and people were spitting people were all sort of what we call unhygienicness was over there but in spite of that that person went over there and uh, got the food try to understand this point we know that logically standing in an especially during this corona times standing in an unhygienic place and especially what we call eating the food logically is not good not as per the etiquettes 
not as per the good habits rules correct but in spite of that we did that i'm not going to ask you whether that person did correct or wrong ultimately he was virtually starving so he has to he had to satisfy himself he had to eat something so he didn't uh, what we call gave a care to this these facts and got the food but the point similar is the point here it is a small organization don't let it skip out of your this memory why in the earlier discussion i used these words just to make the things clear earlier correct you are bound to get such questions when you are going to face the interview you take it in my words because i myself is associated with bunny firms as an interviewer and as a consultant and on that basis i'm trying to tell you and that is the reason actually why, why i'm stressing upon all these facts logically it is wrong to write the balance of any other account in a different account but in spite of that we are doing that out of here because of some constraint because of some you can say uh, constraint because of some force because of some compulsion as that person did he was compelled by the hunger that is why he did something which he was not supposed to or any person not supposed to he was compelled similarly this organization is compelled by the crunch of the crunch of the finance because it's a small organization they cannot afford full-fledged double entry system because full-fledged double entry system warrants a lots of heavy money time also and services of expert people that is the reason under this system balances of different accounts are also put in other accounts to ultimately reach the target the target is that we want to compute the net profit whatever system we adopt ultimate target is we want to assess the net result of the operation correct and we know that by doing this much of minor fault we will be able to what we call get the net profit so why we are writing balance opening balance of data and closing balance of data opening balance of stock and closing balance of stock correct now i will tell you see here because if I am not going to put up these balances here, I cannot get the net profit. I cannot get the net profit. See here. There are two ways of getting the net profit. One way is that I should adopt. I should adopt full-fledged double entry accounting system. Because if I would have had adopted the full-fledged double entry system, in that case it would have been become it would have been very easy for me to compute the profit because in that case i could have found the figures of sales so easily i could have found cost of goods sold so easily by subtracting cost of goods sold from sales i could have found gross profit so easily and from there on i would have subtracted my expenses and i would have had arrived my net profit but problem is that Problem is that it becomes possible to compute the profit this way only when we are adopting full fledged double entry system and which in this case is not possible with the organization of such level. This is a small organization. But technically speaking and logically speaking, no entity can find out net profit without these things. If suppose I tell you or ask you how can you prove me that this is net profit don't give me vague answers some of you might be tend to say sir in the books format is like this and the difference is called net profit now this is no answer even i know that the books are providing even the modules are providing such formats but how will you let me know that this is net profit suppose i say this is not net profit how will you prove me wrong so I will tell you now, that is the reason why I am taking so much of time to make you understand all these intricacies. Just solving the problem is not enough and it will not land up you with a good job. Especially nowadays companies are complaining that CAs which we, CA or CAs or CMAs which they are receiving are not worthy of that, to be very honest with you. And that is exactly the reason, because the focal point is not towards what we call intricacies, but surfacial things. Now everyone knows that this is the format we are subtracting debit item from the credit item so it will be profit this is one part of the game now you have to prove me 4 lakh 90 it has happened in a recent interview i saw correct 
So, I will tell you and prove you how under data system, by adopting this format, we arrive this, we arrive over a figure which is called net profit and how it is net profit, let us see. See here, I will give you now, I will do some magic before you. At least, let me hold the black one first. At least, being commerce student and especially of accounts, at least you should have an idea that we can arrive over net profit by subtracting cost of goods sold from sales and of course expenses. Then we will have the net profit, no doubt about that. Without this, we cannot find out net profit at all. But despite that, I am saying that we are having net profit here. So how it is possible? See here. If I am going to ask you a very simple question, have we written amount of total sales in this account? Please look carefully into the format, into the solution and tell me answer after one minute or two minutes. Have we written the total amount of sales in this account? Pay attention. These are the items. Data, stock, goods sent to branch, cash sales, net profit, stock, data, cash sales and cash from data. Have we written the total amount of sales here in this account? No, sir. So what we have written? We have written cash sales and we haven't written credit sales. Right, exactly. See here. In the branch account, we have written cash sales. We have written cash sales, but we haven't written credit sales. This is the problem. Correct? You are telling me, sir, we have written cash sales. Obviously, I agree with you. And you are telling me, sir, we, are, we haven't written here credit sales. You are exactly right. We haven't written here credit sales. But this is the magic. Now I tell you that in this branch account, I have written credit sales also. Because without writing credit sales, we cannot arrive over net profit. Sir, you have written credit sales, but it is, we are, it is not getting reflected. So here you will have to dig deep. See here. We have written here opening datas. Pay attention now. We have written here opening datas. Do you agree with me or not? Yes, sir. We have written closing datas. Agree with me or not? Yes, sir. And we have written here cash receipt from daters. Pay attention here. Opening daters you have written in the branch account. Closing daters you have written here also. You have written cash from daters. The difference of cash from daters, closing balance and opening balance is nothing but credit sales. That is the reason actually in this particular account, credit sales automatically gets entered. Is it clear to you? Are you getting my point or not? When we have written opening daters and closing daters, along with cash receipt from daters, the credit sales get automatically incorporated in this particular account. Remember, it is not a full-fledged accounting system. We cannot prepare separately a sales account or something like this. So in order to bring the amount of credit sales, we adopt this policy. And that is also the reason why we write opening and closing balance of daters in, the date, in this account. Knowing very well that as a rule, it should not be. But we want to kill actually two birds with one stone. That is the basic idea as that person tried to what we call kill the fire of hunger in despite what we call doing some mistakes. Similarly, this particular organization is trying to what we call achieve twin targets, correct? One to bring the credit sales somehow into this particular account and secondly to arrive over the net profit because even this organization knows that without bringing the amount of credit sales, it is not possible to arrive over net profit. Is it clear to you or not? So, two answers you got here. We have written here credit sales but indirectly, correct? So, it means in the branch account, I have written credit sales also. Is it clear to you or not? Do you agree with me till up to this particular point? Yes, sir, we agree. Now you see, actually, I have written here amount of stock, correct? You presume you are the branch for a while and I am the head office. You are already having 10,000 rupees worth of stock as opening balance, correct? And in the current year, I means the head office sends 5 lakh worth of goods to you. So how much total goods you are having? 5 lakh, 10,000. At the end of the year, you are having 50,000 worth of stock left. 
So what does it signifies? It signifies that out of total goods available with you, out of total available goods 5 lakh 10 thousand, you sold out 50 thousand worth of goods. That means cost of goods sold is 4 lakh 60 thousand. See opening stock plus goods sent, correct? Head office is sending the goods to the branch. You for for simplicity's sake, you take it that way. Branch is purchasing goods from head office because you have a habit of calling opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. Correct? Then you will understand. So you had ten thousand worth of goods in the beginning. Five lakh worth of goods have been supplied to you by the head office in the current year. Total available goods at your disposal is five lakh ten thousand. And by the end of the year, fifty thousand worth of goods are remaining. What does this mean? It means out of 510, 50, out of 510, 460 worth of goods have been sold out. Correct? Of course, you must have sold them at a higher price, but it reflects the cost of the goods sold. So, cost of the goods sold, in order to bring the cost of the goods sold in this particular account, we write the opening and closing balances here. If somebody now asks you why we write the opening balance of debtors, creditors, stock, or for that instance, any item, you should be now in a position to deliver the answer. Correct? I told you as a rule, it is not acceptable that you are going, you are writing what we call balance of a particular account in a different account. But in order to achieve our targets, we are doing that. Correct? Is it clear to you or not? So why we write opening balance and closing balance in the branch account? You please let me know. Sir, so in order to show cost of goods sold. How cost of goods sold is being actually represented here? Sir, we have written opening stock, goods supplied to branch and closing stock and the difference of this is closing cost of goods sold. Right, absolutely. So now you can understand. It means in this particular question, I have written cost of goods sold also. And obviously we have written the expenses. So quite obviously the difference will be nothing but net profit. So now you have proved that how you are getting the net profit. Because even in nutshell, even in this account, we have written the sales, we have written the cost of goods sold and we have written the expenses. So we are bound to get what we call net profit. Is it clear to you or not? So now this is the threadbare analysis of data system. Now you should have the best possible knowledge. And if you will have the best in depth, highest possible, then only you will have the edge in the market. Is it clear to you or not? So what we have discussed in the data system prominent thing is that you must understand that it's an incomplete system. But in order to achieve some targets, we commit what we call some violations of the rules. But ultimate target is to get what we call results. So in this particular system, we have to be wary about this particular fact that credit sales, sales return, bad debts and discount. These are the transaction purely between the branch office and the daters and they are never ever written in the branch account. Why? Because these are the transaction only between branch office and daters. So try to understand. Let us say you are Mr. A and I am Mr. B. If any transaction is taking place between you and I, so obviously either I will write or you will write or we both will write. But why a third person Mr. C will write this particular transaction? Could you tell me? Will he write? No. Similar is the case. If there is any transaction between the branch or data, why the hell in the world actually head office is going to write? Head office will write only the transaction which are taking place between the head office and the branch. So that is the reason actually that whatever transaction takes place between head office and data, such transaction find place only in the data's account, correct? And whatever transaction will take place between head office and the branch office, such transaction obviously we are going to put up in the branch account. One very important point is cash receipt from daters. This is something which affects all the three parties simultaneously. Correct? So that is the reason cash receipt from daters first of all will be written towards the credit side of the branch account and later on, of course, in the branch account. Is it clear to you or not? This is one we learn. This is one point which we learn. Second important point which we learned that as a rule, we should not reflect the balances of any, any other account in a different account. But we are under some force because we somehow want to bring here the amount of credit sales and we want to put up here a figure of cost of goods sold. So for, the for that, we need opening and closing balances of data and stock and that's the reason actually we have to put them over here. Correct? So these are the points which you should be aware of. So in the next session when we are going to meet, obviously we are going to 
take up some sums and besides that again we will talk about some important aspect and some such aspects which very few people are aware of for example how the net profit has arrived at you ask anyone of your friends i'm very sure he won't be able to what we could deliver you the answer but you are now in a position to deliver the answer is it clear to you so on such note we finish up this particular session and of course in the next session we are going to take up some new things